I like for them to come and just live with me for a week and see what you have to do when your school is about to go belly up. There's no course you can take. You know, every day you're making a decision that you never thought you'd have to make in your life. Now this is going to be a crazy one. St. Paul's College has not even been closed for 10 years. However, on the day they closed the doors, all of this drama just started around them. Now the college was founded on September 24th, 1888 by James Solomon Russell, a newly ordained deacon in the Protestant Apostle Church. He became the first principal of the institution, which in 1890 was incorporated as the St. Paul's Normal and Industrial School by the Virginia Assembly. St. Paul's College was a small, beautiful campus in Lawrenceville, Virginia, which is fairly close to the North Carolina state line and not too far away from the bigger city of Richmond, Virginia either. The college typically had 500 to 600 students per year, and though they had some financial struggles, just like all other small private HBCUs in the South, they seemed to keep their heads above water and survive year after year. The president at the time of the closing can be quoted on saying that the buildings needed several upgrades as well as saying that the former leaders made bad financial decisions. The decision to bring back football to St. Paul's College was one of them. A college with only 500 students to begin with then gave all of the football players full rise scholarships so they could stay at the college. It didn't help anything and the school seemed to continue to fall farther into debt. In 2012, largely in part of these financial struggles, St. Paul College lost its accreditation. According to jphe.com, the loss of accreditation would be devastating blow to the college's chance of survival. If accreditation is revoked, students would no longer be eligible for federal financial aid programs and St. Paul's College has vowed to appeal the ruling. Under the rules of the appeal, the college would re Retain its accreditation until the process is completed. The president at the time, Eddie Moore Jr., issued a statement to say that we are disappointed is a terrible understatement to have raised nearly $5 million in six months despite the challenges before us. We had a turnaround putting the college on a trajectory for a solid future and it was a team effort which resulted in a monumental achievement. If we can do this in half a year, imagine what we could do if we were allowed to continue. Dr. Moore continued and said, we came a long way. While this is most certainly a bitter pill to swallow for our entire family, our friends, our staff, and the alumni, and the local community, I am not done. I look forward to hearing the details of the commission's decision, rolling up my sleeves, and focusing on our appeal. It's not over to the angels sing. Well, though he said this, he quit not long after <laughs> this statement came out, and they lost the accreditation. The appeal was denied. And that was pretty much the beginning of the end because they lost every single student. Now it should be noted before they lost the students and the campus closed for good. In 2012, St. Augs was actually trying to merge with St. Paul's College and save it from ruin and closing. In their last year, they had approximately 600 students. Now St. Augustine's University, which at the time was known as St. Augustine's College, is located in Raleigh, North Carolina and is one of three HBCUs that share an affiliation with the Apostle Church. Former president of St. Augustine's College, Diane Suber, was quoted saying, We find ourselves with the opportunity to do what is necessary to not only preserve the legacy of our sister college, but restore the viability, credibility, and reputation of the HBCU. The plan would create the St. Paul's College campus of St. Augustine's University in Virginia on the site of the St. Paul's College. St. Paul would become an extension of St. Aug with the academic programs as such. Basically, you would attend the campus in Virginia, but be awarded a St. Augustine's University slash college degree. University officials for St. Paul's were quoted with saying that St. Aug was going to make this transition as seamless as possible. And this all sounds pretty great on paper, but St. Paul's College was in massive debt, about $5 million in debt. And if St. Aug went through with this merger, St. Aug would assume all of St. Paul's liabilities, debts, and revenues. Still with all the mounting debt, St. Paul's College assured St. Aug that they were actually getting a steal. On the table, said the president, is an estimated $30 million in 
property, buildings, and infrastructure. That includes a student center, a gymnasium that's paid for, about 500 acres of undeveloped land attached to the 142-acre college, and a subdivision lot in an exclusive area of Virginia's Farquhar County. That is probably worth about $300,000. St. Paul's location in rural Virginia and away from commercial properties has made liquidating some of the buildings and assets literally impossible. I guess because they're so far out in the country. Now, this seemed like St. Paul's saving grace, that St. Aug would come in and save the day and there would be a merger and they wouldn't have to close. However, St. Augustine's College in 2012 and 2013 was in debt as well. They were about $4 million in debt and enrollment was down by about 300 students. So the grants were coming in slower and slower. Then the money just started looking real funny around Diane Suber. She had put her foot in her mouth by saying that she was going to do a merger with absolutely no money to spare in the budget. And St. Augustine's University at this point was also getting sued by a landscaping company because they had started building on a football field and never were paid. So they were getting sued and the football field would stay unfinished for about another five years. So after months of keeping St. Paul in limbo, St. Aug had to come out and finally make a statement. They said, this was a very difficult decision to make. We explored several options in an effort to make the acquisition viable for St. Augustine's University. However, after completing our due diligence, we concluded that the merger of St. Paul's College at this time would significantly challenge the fiscal stability of St. Augustine's University. In other words, the merger isn't happening, pack up shop. So unfortunately, in 2013, St. Paul's College had to close its doors to students while still trying to hopefully find a buyer for the school, which indeed bought on the commercials and the advertisement for the school. The buildings are all basically three-story buildings. They have two floors above ground and one floor below ground. So the buildings were truly functional, but all of the buildings blend together because the architects and the builders made sure that those buildings would match up with the brick. So it's a really beautiful scene. And again, it is postcard picturesque. St. Paul's College has this wonderful piece of land, over 570 acres, that is contiguous to the campus that basically has on it harvestable timber. It has fertile soil that you can grow crops on even today. It has fish ponds on it. And it's certainly a great investment from someone who would like to come in and be a part of this new transition. We believe anyone coming in and partnering with St. Paul's College or outright purchasing St. Paul's College, they can financially make this a viable campus. And we believe that in the location in which it sits, it draws a lot of students from North Carolina. It draws a lot of students from Southern Virginia. So we think that this investment that someone is willing to make for St. Paul's College will have great returns in the future to come. Now, St. Paul's College is a beautiful college. You know, I always thought that this was a college that a different world was actually insinuating that it could be. You know, I know it's a make-believe college, Hillman College, but I always thought a different world because they were located in Virginia, but they weren't really in Richmond, but they drove up there. It was like a 40-minute drive to Richmond. Then it was like a 40-minute drive to North Carolina. So I used to always say, that is St. Paul's College. Like, it's right there on the cusp of North Carolina and Richmond, Virginia. So I used to always think that. It was just my creative way of thinking. However, back to the story. So... The college should not have stayed on the market for long because it's beautiful and the commercial was great, right? So just how the deal with St. Aug fell through, another deal fell through, it was a situation with Dr. Umar. If you guys don't know Dr. Umar, he is a social media self-proclaimed um, genius. He says he's a, he's a doctor and he, he's always listing all of his degrees whenever he does an interview. You guys can go check that out yourselves. But in 2014, he acquired about buying the college. He went to the college, took a tour and did this whole movie production and said that he was going to open an academy. I want you to help Dr. Umar Johnson stop that by donating to my fundraiser, by helping me and our ancestors raise the money necessary to acquire St. Paul's campus. We need this 135 acres for our children. We have the dormitories. 
We have the gymnasium. We have the lecture halls. We have the cafeteria. We have a beautiful student center. I want this school to be a blueprint, a role model to every other independent African school in the world to show them that African children are not the intellectual inferiors of European Americans, to show them that our children want to learn as much as anyone else. I'm tired of the phone calls from our mothers and fathers crying about what's being done to their children. Now listen, Dr. Umar received a bunch of backlash for this, basically because a lot of the alumni felt like he went there and used the college for some type of clout to um, put on this fake fundraiser for funds they claim that they have never seen. Nobody has ever seen it. And they claim that he did not even put in an offer to buy the school. So he just did all of this for show and tell. And it would seem that way because this was back in 2014. He's just now coming to the Breakfast Club, I think, like three months ago. And the year was 2022 to say that he decided, oh, not to buy it because they wanted two million and he only raised 500. It was it's just ridiculous. It was a very long process. And tribulations yes, sir. And hurdles. So yes, sir. Talk about that a little bit and what you had to get through and also getting funding. Yes, sir. We um, took our first donation in St. Louis 2014. We heard about the St. Paul's College, which was an HBCU closed in Virginia. Mm -hmm. They wanted $2 million, so we tried to raise it as quickly as we can. That was a bit ambitious. We didn't succeed. Mm -hmm. It was sold to an Asian uh, company. Unfortunately, an HBCU sold to another race, I think, is a great disappointment for us as a people. So then we just started looking for a day school. So with that falling through and all the backlash, people to this day are still very upset at Umar. They feel like Umar used the college for a scam fundraiser and that probably could be true because it has been almost 10 years since that fundraiser fell through and nobody even knows what happened to the funds you just pop up and build a school 10 years later so people still feel a way about that because a lot of alumni did donate because they had their hearts set on the college reopening now in 2017 the college was finally sold the Zinha Education Investment Corporation, a Chinese-backed group, purchased the remaining property of the historically black college on November 27, 2017, according to the county court records. The group secured about 130 acres and about 30 campus buildings in Lawrenceville, Virginia. Representatives of Zinha could not be reached for comment in 2017. Now, according to the president at the time, he said that he was informed that the school would be turned into a school for Chinese Americans. However, nobody has ever heard from the people who actually bought the campus since 2017. They, ha they can't be reached for comment. They haven't done anything with the school. The school sits as is after it was bought for $2 million. It's really sad because it's abandoned and it has become viral on social media for the fact that it is abandoned and spooky looking. And I've seen several viral posts about St. Paul's College and people taking videos and posting it and saying, oh, look how spooky this is. Oh, this abandoned college that nobody ever goes to. I really wonder why someone would buy this property to abandon and neglect it like it is for one. I want to know for two, why an HBCU would sell to Chinese. And I want to know for three, is it true that the address is actually being used to get immigrants in illegally, but nobody ever goes there? And will these people be willing to sell it back to alumni or back to somebody who actually wants to do something with the institution? So here's a video of how the institution looks now. As you can see, there's been no upkeep. There's been nothing. There's a few windows missing. I think rocks have been thrown into a few windows and doors. And people have commented about seeing homeless people live there. Also, people strung out on drugs at all times of night and daytime just sleeping wherever on the college campus and it is really sad that this beautiful college 10 years almost 10 years later has been reduced to what it has been reduced to so this is the current state of the campus now and all hope is not lost thanks to some special and generous alumni they have founded the group spc for life which stands for saint paul's college for life 
and they have a business front. I think they were founded in 2020. And the whole purpose is to one day reopen St. Paul's College and reimagine it into what they are used to and what they know. Now, I've seen a few videos from the alumni group and they have meetings every month. And, you know, this is their poster and you can cash at them if you want to help the cause. They have meetings every month, like I said, and... I seen a video where I think the founder of the alumni group actually went inside the gym and it was in pretty bad shape and it had a lot of water damage. But the fact that he was able to get the keys and go in there and it's just like, it's an amazing thing to see. And he says, you know, we have a lot of work to do, but if everybody pulls together their resources, fundraisers, I think they have one going on right now that they could do the things that need to be done for this college. He also said that some buildings needed to be demolished because there was just you know, no point in redoing them when you can tear it down and make it from scratch probably cheaper. So good luck to the alumni of St. Paul's College. And I wanna give a special thanks to everybody that made this video possible. I will put it in the description. Please enjoy this last video clip from the SPC for life of them ringing the bell at St. Paul's College. See you in the next one. Family and friends, once again, we're here to ring the bell. And as you, the sign says, staff parking only for St. Paul's College. And yes, we have one of St. Paul's greats here, Coach Steve Wallace, the former coach for volleyball, softball, and bowling. And bowling. Wow, and uh, Steve, just say, you know, something for encouragement to keep us the why you want St. Paul's College to be reimagined. St. Paul's College embraced me and I embraced them. And we have to keep the fight and keep the legacy going. That's fact, which is very important. That's why I'm here today. You know, we got to keep hope alive. Wow, that's amazing. So now we're going to walk up here and we're going to do what? Ring the bell. And the, the purpose of ringing the bell it's to show our commitment to reimagining and reclaiming St. Paul's College property and the legacy of Archdeacon Jane Solomon Russell. And just creating educational opportunities for the underserved, for it's for the whole community. We're gonna be very inclusive in this process. But Steve, let's ring this bell, man. Wow. That's what I was saying. We gotta, we gotta make sure that we get something that's very secure up there and ringing that bell. So we're gonna replace that. Uh, I'm gonna ring the bell. Now, Taquan, won't you ring the bell, man? Come on, ring the bell. Let me, let me hold the the device and you ring the bell. And what are you ringing the bell for, Taquan? Um, I'm ringing the bell for gracefulness. Gracefulness. Can you can you reach it? Yeah, you can reach it. Barely. Barely. <laughs> All right, all right, that's great, that is great. 